Thank you very much, Bob, for that kind introduction. And uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Bo and I are very excited to have a chance to talk to you about our research findings. And uh, I should point out that the report was also co-authored by our colleague, Riley Sullivan, as well. Uh, I'm going to give the usual oops, Fed disclaimer before I begin for Fed researchers, which is that uh, the views expressed in uh, this report are those of the authors and don't necessarily represent the views of the Federal Reserve of Boston or the Federal Reserve System. And so the reintegration of ex-offenders is an important policy topic, and how to reintegrate ex-offenders into uh, civil society is a difficult question. Um, this is a large population. About 30% of the U.S. adult population has some type of criminal record, according to the Department of Justice. And these ex-offenders face serious barriers in terms of legal employment and are often prone to recidivism. And so one of those barriers is that state laws often allow employers to check applicants' criminal histories and records when making hiring decisions. Now, recently, many states have been uh, prohibiting the usage of this information, and one such reform that we're going to focus on occurred right here in Massachusetts. And so the state of Massachusetts implemented major reform regarding employers' access to criminal offender record information, or what's known as CORI, in 2010 and 2012. And so the expectations by the legislators from this reform were that it was going to improve ex-offenders' labor market outcomes, as well as reduce their recidivism rates. And so that's our main research question in this report. Did the core reform actually affect the employment and recidivism of ex-offenders? Just to give a brief preview of our findings, the research suggests that the core reform actually resulted in a small reduction in ex-offender employment, as well as a small reduction in recidivism. Now we're going to talk about how to interpret these findings jointly uh, a little bit later, but irrespective of that interpretation, uh, one thing we want to emphasize from our findings is that more changes are needed in order to better support the reintegration of ex-offenders into civil society. So just to set the stage regarding the access to criminal history and records before the Coley reform in 2010 in Massachusetts, before the reform, public and private employers were allowed to use initial written uh, job applications in order to inquire about criminal history. Now, there were some exceptions to this, such as uh, Boston in 2006, which prohibited the use of this information for city employees and vendors. But by and large, this was the situation in the state. Now, the query data at this time as well were only available to statutorily required or certified employers. And these were employers who did work that was often related to vulnerable populations, such as children or seniors. And most private employers uh, that did not have access to Cori thus result, uh, relied on consumer reporting agency information in order to conduct criminal background checks and look at uh, criminal histories of their job applicants. And ex-offenders and advocacy groups uh, often raised concerns that these CRA reports were uh, prone to errors and sometimes included information that was actually illegal to be included uh, in this kind of check by employers. And so this kind of set the stage and the impetus for the Cori reform, which occurred in 2010 and 2012. And so this reform actually occurred in two phases. All right, so the first phase is what's known as uh, the ban the box reform in November in 2010. And so this reform prohibited public and private employers from asking about a job applicant's criminal history in this initial application. This was followed a couple of years later in May 2012 by the second phase of the reform, which we call in the report the record access reform. And so this reform made the state core database more widely accessible to employers, um, both public and private. And there were legal incentives uh, for employers to switch in the form of uh, no liability for 90 days if these employers use the state core database information for their hiring decisions. There are also economic incentives for employers to switch to the database in the form of uh, relatively low cost to check applicants, $25, compared to anecdotally higher costs for uh, criminal uh, consumer reporting agency information. Now, not necessarily all employers may have switched. Because this is information that was limited to uh, state criminal uh, activity, if you were a large national employer or perhaps maybe a more risk-averse employer, you may have been less willing to switch because you would have wanted to know information about your job applicants' criminal backgrounds across the country. Uh, but by and large, our sense of this reform is that many employers did switch and in addition to making it widely accessible, the reform, uh, this component of the reform also restricted information uh, returned to what were called standard access requests by excluding non-conviction or non-incarcerable cases. 
as well as older cases that were convicted misdemeanors older than five years and convicted felonies older than 10 years. So the goal was to try to limit uh, how long someone's information was accessible. Um, now, standard access didn't apply to all employers, so a law enforcement agency would have higher degree of access, but you can think of a standard access as applying to most private sector employers like a McDonald's or a Walmart. Um, now, some information was always returned. Uh, convicted manslaughter, murder, sex offense charges, as well as any pending cases would always be seen. And so that's the backdrop uh, with which we entered into this research. And in order to actually conduct the research, as Bob uh, highlighted, we needed to get access to both criminal history and employment uh, labor market data. And so uh, we were grateful to have access to this data from, um, in terms of the quarry records in Massachusetts, from the Department of Criminal Justice Information Services. And this was the universe of unsealed quarry records through 2015 quarter three. And we also received employment information from Massachusetts Unemployment Insurance Wage Records from the Executive Office of Labor and Workforce Development and the Department of Unemployment Ins Assistance. And this is employer provided uh, UI quarterly earnings records from 2010 quarter one through 2015 quarter three. This is before I turn it over to Bo, it's uh, useful to get a sense descriptively of what the Cori database population looks like. And so this table compares that population to the general Massachusetts population in 2015. And what we can see from the table is that the population in the Cori database is disproportionately more likely to be male and disproportionately less likely to be female. And regarding race and ethnicity, the Cori population, uh, people in the Cori database with Cori records are disproportionately more likely to be uh, black, Hispanic, and white, disproportionately less likely to be Asian and Native American. And then lastly, uh, we also wanted to take a look at what industries uh, tended to be represented in terms of ex-offender employment. And so you can see that uh, the top industry had over 20,000 uh, individuals employed, and this is looking at before Ban the Box, so 2010 quarter one through 2010 quarter three. Food services and drinking places was the industry that was most represented, followed by uh, administrative and support services, uh, as well as executive, legal, and other governmental support. And in each of these cases, for all these industries, we should uh, keep in mind that this could come about from three different possible sources. One is the industries that job uh, applicants that are ex-offenders tend to apply to. Uh, this could also come about from the industries that em where employers tend to hire ex-offenders as well as the industries that tend to be largest in Massachusetts. So keep in mind that all of those factors could be contributing to the trends that we see here. So I'm gonna turn it over now to my colleague, Bo, who's gonna discuss the research approach and our findings. Thanks, Artemon. So, um, so uh, an ideal research approach uh, to studying the impact of the core reform is to run a true experiment in which uh, some people are randomly assigned to be affected by the core reform, while others are randomly assigned to not be affected by the reform. Uh, then we could just look at the, the difference between the two groups after the reform to uh, obtain the impact of the core reform. However, we know uh, such an experiment is not feasible in reality. Um, it's not feasible, so we know it's not random that uh, who is and who is not affected the core reform. So then it will be, uh, be misleading for us to just look at the, um, the difference between the two groups after the reform without accounting for the pre-existing differences between the two groups, um, which may also affect the employment. So how are we going to deal with this problem? Our solution is to use the, uh, the difference between the two groups uh, before the reform uh, in their employment outcomes as a proxy for the pre-existing uh, non-random uh, group differences and then take it out of the uh, difference between the two groups in their employment outcome after the reform. By doing that, we could interpret the results as the impact of the core reform. So let's use this approach uh, to look at what's the impact of the, core, uh, the band box, the, which is the first component of the core reform on ex-offender employment uh, outcomes. So the, so the left, uh, the, the blue bar on the left uh, indicates that in the three quarters, uh, 
before the quarry reform, before the band box, which is 2010 quarter one to 2010 quarter three, individuals who's uh, without a quarry record has a higher average employment rate than individuals with quarry records by 5.5 percentage points. And the, red, the blue bar on the right indicates in the six quarters after the, uh, the band box reform, which is 2010 Q4 to 2012 quarter one, the difference between the two groups increased to 8.1%. That means after the band box reform, the average employment of individuals with quarry reform, or with quarry records, declined 2.6 percentage point. And this, uh, this difference even exists after we take into account the differences between the two groups in their gender, race, ethnicity, and even their, uh, the local market conditions. Now let's use this approach to look at the impact of the, the second component of COVID reform, the record access reform on ex-offenders' uh, employment outcome. The, the bar on the left uh, indicates in the six quarters before the record access reform, individuals that, uh, who could uh, be affected by the this record access form because their records will become inaccessible after the reform, already have a higher average unemployment rate than individuals, than ex-offenders who will not be affected uh, by the record access reform by 14.653 percentage uh, percent. And the, the bar on the right indicates that the difference between the two groups actually declined to 14.195% uh, in the uh, 14 quarters after the record access reform. In other words, after the record access reform, the average uh, employment rate of people who, are, uh, who could be affected by the record access reform declined 0.46 percentage point. And that difference still remains after we take into account a difference between the two groups in their other factors such as gender, race, ethnicity, and labor market tightness. So you may wonder why we see negative employment effect on ex-offenders uh, employment associated with the uh, core reform. And we think there are at least two possibilities. First, um, the, the core reform may improve ex-offenders' perception about their job prospect. Therefore, uh, they, may be, they may be a little bit more selective about what jobs they apply for or what job offers they accept. And they may seek uh, jobs with better work conditions or higher wages. Alternatively, employers might change their hiring practices, hiring criteria and use other observable applicant information to continue screen out ex-offenders. For example, they may raise their in, uh, requirements uh, for education attainment or uh, work experience. And we know ex-offenders tend to have a lower education level and more spotty work experience. Unfortunately, uh, due to our data limitation, we are unable to definitively prove which of the possibilities uh, drive the results. Certainly more data and more research are needed uh, to better understand, to have a better understanding of the underlying mechanism. Well, the other, another goal of the core reform is to lower, reduce a recidivism rate. So let's see what's the impact of the core reform on the recidivism rate. This figure shows the average probability of an ex-offender receive an, uh, a new conviction uh, for, a new, uh, for another crime uh, in each quarter since the previous conviction. 
and the darker blue line, which is on the top, indicates uh, uh, it's for the period uh, before the band box reform. And the lighter blue line at the bottom indicates the, uh, is for the uh, period after the band box reform. You can see that for each given, for each given a number of uh, quarters <coughs> since the previous conviction, the probability of uh, reconviction declined after the band box reform. And this decline translated into about 8% reduction in three-year reconviction rate. And, and this is even after we take into account the other influencing factors such as uh, the individual's age, race, ethnicity, gender, and the tightness of local market conditions. Now let's see the, the impact of the record access reform on ex-offenders' uh, recidivism rate. Uh, again, this figure shows you the, the probability of reconviction uh, in each quarter since the previous conviction. The darker blue line uh, indicates the, uh, is for in, uh, ex-offenders who could be affect, uh, who uh, are, were not affected by the record access reform. And the lighter blue line uh, are for uh, ex-offenders who could be affected by the record access reform. And again, similar to what we saw in the previous figure, you can see for a given number of quarters since pre the previous conviction, the record access reform resulted in a decline in the probability of reconviction. And this decline translated into about 7% uh, seven percent uh, reduction in three-year reconviction rate and this um, reduction holds up even after we take into account uh, other influencing factors such as gender, race, ethnicity, uh, labor market condition. And you may wonder how could recidivism rate decline when we don't see the employment outcome improve for, uh, for affected ex-offenders well, uh, certainly we need more data and analysis to really pinpoint, uh, to, to pinpoint why, but one possible explanation uh, is that the core reform improved the perception of ex-offenders about their uh, labor uh, market prospect. So that may encourage them to seek better jobs with better work conditions or better wages and not return back to their criminal activities. So, um, we don't, we don't view our findings as, a indica as indication that the core reform fails. Um, our results do suggest that the band box reform and restricting employer uh, access to criminal records are not a cure or and certainly more changes are needed to help these ex-offenders, to help them, to support them uh, better, uh, better integration into the civil society, and policymakers may want to explore other policy uh, tools to achieve this goal to encourage uh, employers to hire more ex-offenders. And for uh, some uh, potential examples, include providing ex uh, ex uh, employers with more evidence-based information about ex-offender productivity to reduce the misper some misperception about their behavior and the productivity, and, and also some states uh, experimenting with more in-prison uh, job trainings. Some states uh, was, are implementing uh, the, uh, the certificate of employability for eligible ex-employers. Um, these are certainly promising examples, but more research is definitely needed to show the, to examine their effectiveness, effectiveness of these alternative policies. So we're very excited uh, to work on this project. Certainly uh, there's more work to be done. So now I'm turning the podium to Ben.